Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2016. We're going to be taking a look at David Gilmour and he's going to be performing Coming Back to Life. Now, I have already looked at this video and after over an hour of filming and explaining guitar techniques, I've played back the audio and for some reason, when I'm talking along with the video next to me, there is a delay somehow in the computer. So some kind of feedback loop going on, not sure how it's happened because I'm using exactly the same setup as I'm using now when I'm talking into the microphone. But when I was explaining the guitar techniques, the delay sound goes away. So you'll just have to deal with that delay sound. Unfortunately, hopefully it's not too off-putting for you guys. And just imagine that I'm speaking in an arena or something and that's why it's got a delay on there. But let's Let's get into the video. So let's get David up on screen and see how he gets on. I'm just going to jump in here because there is so much in the intro, the lead guitar solo in the intro as well. And the way that David does play around with the intro sometimes live, playing slightly different versions of it. But a massive part about David's playing is the amount of energy that he saves up in the pick. I am going to be busting out the guitar later just to demonstrate the level of dynamic change David goes through while he's playing. And that's what it's all about. 
He is such an expressive player. And when you think about everybody's got the same notes that they're using, I'll take you through the same shapes that David's using throughout this whole song. Just what he can do with a basic shape is so impressive and there is a lot of technique to it as well because playing this cleanly on a relatively clean tone here but getting all the other strings to stay quiet is such a difficult exercise in itself. The other thing in the intro is that mix of minor and major sounds that we go to. It's all really in the major pentatonic shape of C in the intro but by bending that third finger on the G string just ever so slightly, not going the full tone, it's giving you that bluesy sound to it, even though we're in a major pentatonic shape. Like I said, I'm gonna be demonstrating this all in a second, but when David starts singing as well, it's another thing to add into the equation, the ability to add in vocals. He's got such a distinctive voice. When he starts singing, he's got all of that angst and that rasp that's naturally in there, so it's full of emotion, as well as having that emotion in his guitar playing as well, getting his guitar to sing, and for me, David Gilmour is the encapsulation of art in music because he's a guy that plays guitar his own way and he sings his own way. He's not trying to copy anybody. And when we're looking at the greatest guitarist of all time lists, for example, Rolling Stone magazine have David in there at number 14. When you also look at his vocals, he was in at number 36, I think, of the greatest voices of all time, and that was on Planet Rock Radio, as voted for by listeners. So, when I say that he's the encapsulation of that artistry, he's just singing how he sings, and he plays guitar how he plays guitar, and because of that, he is such a unique artist that he's always going to not only be rated at the top of those greatest guitarists of all time lists, but also vocally. And this is something that a lot of artists fall into the trap of trying to sound like a particular guitarist or sound like a particular singer. Whereas just sing your own way and play guitar your own way as well, because that is what's going to get your art out there the most authentic way. And that will give you your own authentic voice because you're not trying to directly copy somebody else. When you've got someone playing keys, some of those variations you can get. Such a great underlayer to some lead guitar, especially when you're talking about a guy like David Gilmour playing over the top of it with all of his expression, but also the way that he slides and bends and uses seemingly simple shapes, but gets such amazing results out of it using the whammy bar as well. So rather than trying to explain everything, I've just got these strat out because it's gonna be easier to show you guys. We're just gonna break down the intro because there is so much in there. And when I say the intro, just a tiny section of it, straight off the bat. When we come in with the first two notes, which are two Gs, you can already hear the aggressiveness of the pick that I'm doing, but also David does at the beginning of the song. And we've got this. And then this wide use of vibrato with the whammy bar. So we've got. And then use of the whammy bar again. And even those bends, I'm gonna do that again slowly because already there is so much technically going on with the playing on the fretboard that unless you play yourself, you won't be able to appreciate the level that David is playing at here to keep all the other strings quiet. So when I start picking the intro again, When you do this bend up, if you come down and catch another string, that's gonna be ringing out the whole time. And David doesn't do that. He just keeps it super clean the whole way through. I wanna draw your attention to the pick because the way that David picks the guitar, he changes the dynamics of his picking all the time. And this is how he can get two notes to sound different, even though they're the same note. For example, if I went, just those two notes. There's a definite difference between those and that's just the attack of the pick. And the way to explain it is, if I'm already resting on the string before I pick the string, 
I'm building up potential energy so that my pick is pushing against the string so that when I do allow that pick now to go through that string, it's going to pop. I'm going to get a rather than a soft sound where I'm not resting on the string before it. And if you were really close in, you'd also be able to see the string slightly move when I'm applying pressure to it before I let go and then it pops as a pick. So it just jumps out at you rather than being less aggressive. And this is the kind of thing that David does so well all the time. He'll just be playing a simple run and just in a tiny little phrase like that, there will be so much dynamic variation in his playing. It wouldn't be... It won't be all flat like that. It'll be... And there'll be such degrees of subtlety that as a player, you really do appreciate. He has that advantage of having the vocal ability to keep that conversation between him and the guitar. Sometimes when you're watching a band who has a lead guitarist, the conversation will be between the guitar and the lead singer, who is a designated lead singer. Whereas when you have guys that can sing and play at the same time, it means that they get the conversation between their voice and the guitar, and it's the same voice coming out, but you get the call and response. So the next phrase, again, really simple, but so well played dynamically. We've got this slide up. And in that tiny phrase that I've just played, there is so much going on. Obviously the accuracy of the bends as well, playing through that first line again. This is another thing that I love about David Gilmour's playing, is playing the same note twice. Because so many players move across the fretboard and feel like if they stay in one spot for too long, then it might get boring and they just move away from every single note. And it's just a constant journey that hasn't got any point of reference or doesn't have the same phrase repeated. And this is something that when you're having a conversation with somebody, if somebody's repeating a particular word, it's more understandable and it highlights the point. And that's exactly what we get with David's playing when he's playing. And I'll play the rest of it at this tempo. So what's going on there? So much dynamically. You can hear the aggressiveness of the picks that I'm getting so that it's almost verging on. If I had a heavier tone, a pinched harmonic sound because I'm going... You can hear it's got that aggressiveness in there. This is the thing that just with these phrases that I've played through so far, we're hardly into the song yet. But there is so much that can be pointed out and things that I haven't pointed out yet about that phrase. We've got that pre-bend in there. Which, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't play guitar, it's exactly what it sounds like. You pre-bend the string before picking it and then let it come back down to where it would normally be fretted. So in the context of the line that we're playing, I exaggerated it a bit there, but just so you start to notice what a pre-bend sounds like and the technique that is responsible for getting that sound. Then getting into the next phrase, this video could go on for years. I'm not going to be breaking down the whole solo in tiny little sections, but just so we know, this is in A minor at the moment. And I mentioned at the beginning that we're in C major here. And these two chords are relatives, so it means that you use the same shape for both the chords. So when I'm in shape one, 
and I played. If I now play C, as I said in my other video, that I don't want to make this too complicated, but if you're playing in the minor key, finish on your third finger. If you're playing in the major key, finish on your first finger. So when you're playing in C, you finish on your first finger, playing in the minor form, A minor, finish on your third finger and it's going to sound better. So now that we know the shapes, we can start to look at what David's doing. We have this something along those lines. I'm not sure if I got the notes exactly right, but you can hear how all of that to start with is just that rake across the first finger barring down the shape that I've just played. If I squash down my first finger, you get that sound. And if you want to get a similar sound that David's getting, you can start to roll your first finger quickly and you'll get You'll get more separation between the notes rather than... And you might have heard other guitarists doing that technique. You might recognize that sound, especially from David, just raking through that shape, squashing down your first finger. And getting that sound. So a little lead in to that... To that third finger that I'm fretting here on the eighth fret of our... And then getting into the bend. Like I said, I'm not going to play through the whole solo of the intro, but even the way that we end this phrase that we... By the way, that little three fret slide, so cool. And then this little run. Such a cool run to throw together. And it sits so well in this A minor key. And like I said, it's the relative of C. So when things start to get happier, and the we'll start going into that major key and we'll start to feel uplifted because that's what that major key is gonna do. Another thing I quickly wanna throw in there are the mini dives that David does with his whammy bar when he's playing a note. For example, the decrease in pitch before hearing the destination note. So in slow motion, we're going. So he's actually pushing down the whammy bar in order to get. To get that little ascension to the note. Again, really subtle details, but it's so cool the way that he just throws it in there. For guitarists out there as well, when David goes higher up the neck, it's still the pentatonic scale, but just now the extended shape. So those are our notes that we're going to be playing. And at the top here, we're now back into shape one. So we're exactly an octave higher. Again, another hack that when you learn a shape down at the bottom, just look at the dot you're on, and if your first finger's on the second dot, the guitar starts again here. This is another octave, it's like having another guitar. So look at where you were on the second dot with your first finger, go to the second dot with your first finger. It might be a little bit tighter there, but it's all the same. So anything that you've played, you can instantly move up an octave and down an octave. You don't have to learn anything else. But, but as, you as you guys can appreciate, appreciate trying to, to teach, teach David, David Gilmore's, Gilmore's technique, technique in a few in minutes is never gonna happen. happen. It would take it would years, years to get into the subtlety, subtlety of, of David, David Gilmore's, Gilmore's playing. But let's get let's back get into back this into performance. performance. Outside 
And there we have it. That whole performance and the personality in the playing, like right at the end there, we have some classic David Gilmore fills, and some of the lines that he throws together are so melodic, and it's just using the same shapes everybody else has, but it's putting these notes together in such an order that it is like somebody singing an interesting melody, and then once you put all of that expression in there, it makes all the difference, because you can instantly tell when it's David Gilmour playing a particular phrase and then when somebody else is trying to play that same phrase it just doesn't have that same personality and it's the same across the board with all of the top guitar players they just have that personality in their playing. Something that I quickly want to throw in there about David's playing again and just to make a point about people's playing in general there'll be particular things that you like to play that you like the sound of and that gives you your own personality when you're playing the guitar and David's no different so right at the end of the song we have this fill which is such a David Gilmore fill. Some of you might have recognized that fill at the end of the song and it might have reminded you of another song. Which is Wish You Were Here if you don't know what I'm playing, if I'm not playing it very well. But that whole intro. And here. It's something like that. I don't know exactly the phrasing of it, but it's exactly the same fill that I just played, but in a different key. So you can see how players all across the world, and David's no different, will have particular things that they like to do, and it's going to sound melodic, and it's going to speak to them on an artistic level and on a personal level, and that's what they use when they play, and everybody's the same. You'll have particular lines, particular fills that you like the sound of, and you put into your own playing, and that's what it's all about, because... When you start using the same kind of fills and the same kind of lines all the time, you then get your own personality because people will recognize your playing because it will have consistencies throughout it. I can feel that this video is going on for ages, so I'm going to wrap it up now. When you're looking at a player like David Gilmour or any top player and you start breaking down their technique and their sound, it's the kind of thing that can go on for years. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at. It has been a name that has popped up recently in the comments section, David Gilmour, but this was suggested quite a while back. It just so happens that they've overlapped with suggestions that have been coming through in the last few days. But keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!